Welcome to this video where I'd like to go over how to do an analysis on this table. This table is actually uh, created by All Visuals for You. Uh, it's a great channel if you haven't seen them already. I work with them quite a bit now. Um, All Visuals for You actually has a video on how to make this table. And so it would be kind of fun to make the table uh, with All Visuals for You and then follow along with me if you'd like when we do an analysis. Uh, so uh, doing an analysis in FreeCAD, um, is, I, I find FreeCAD to be a really amazing software. The first thing I want to point out is this table is made of multiple bodies, right? I have tabletop, array, cap, tube, frame. So there's uh, a number of bodies here. And for an analysis, when I mesh, I want to mesh them all into one body. So to do that, I highlight everything here. And on the Start menu, I go to Part, and I choose Union and it creates a fusion of all of these bodies. Notice we have a minor uh, graphic change here. I think one of the easy ways to uh, deal with this is I can right click on fusion and change the appearance to something different, maybe something like aluminum or something. And, uh, and it kind of evens out our graphics. And we've got kind of a beautiful model now. I click on fusion and it highlights the entire body. And that's what we want, all bodies fused into one because then we can mesh it. Uh, so once we're meshed together, uh, let's head on over to something like uh, the FEM menu, and we'll click on A for a new analysis. Uh, one of the other points for analysis that I want to make is we've got things like these bottom feet here, we've got a, a chamfer here, we've got a few other elements, um, and, and the general rule behind FEM is to analyze the most simple part without sacrificing results. I'm not going to do that in this video. I'm just going to, going to do the whole table, but there is an option that if you're getting any kind of meshing errors or something, you can get rid of small things like the fill, like the feet, and, and get good results and maybe uh, minimize any meshing errors that you might get. Keep that in mind. Uh, so I'll talk about meshing errors a little bit later. Right now, let's think about what we want to keep stationary. And I'm going to choose this button right here, which um, anchors geometry. So uh, I'm going to choose the bottom feet of this table. And I'm going to say that these parts that are green are now glued to the floor. I'm going to add them. And so they will not move. And you can see I've got the little anchor symbol on these faces telling me that these will not move in the analysis, right? These are anchored to the floor. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is choose this tabletop. And um, I have several options. I can do a self-weight analysis where I just say, how does this hold up under its own weight? And uh, that button would be, there it is, self-weight right there. But I'm going to choose actually a force acting on geometric entity. The other thing I can do is a pressure. So if you wanted to analyze, you know, um, a tank or anything under pressure, that's a good option. But here I'm going to add a force. I'm going to choose this face, reverse the direction so that the force is going down near the tabletop. And this is in newtons, so I can add something like 16 newtons and, and call it good. Again, uh, there's our 16 newtons. The next thing I can do is um, maybe add a secondary force. You know, if, if someone bumps a leg or something, uh, this leg is very well supported due to the nature of the frame here. And so you think it might be the most vulnerable incurring a torsion force or a, a twisting around force. So I'm going to put a force on this face. And we'll do a force, uh, probably a lighter load, something like 20. Let's go 30 newtons acting on that face here. And we'll change the direction to going into that face. Cool, so we've got our forces. We've got our anchor geometry. I'm going to add a material using this button. And we'll do something generic, maybe something like C10 steel. And so now we're made out of steel in this whole body. And I can add perhaps uh, a mesh. And the mesh, uh, I click on the fusion so that the entire body is highlighted. And I choose a G mesh. And N mesh is not applicable here. We'll go with maximum element size. Notice if I type in 10, I think it interprets it as 10 millimeters and converts it to. Um, 0.39 inches. I think that's uh, what that's doing there. And then I can click apply and notice when I click apply, depending on your hardware, it could take a while. So we'll begin meshing. And as I was saying before, some of these mesh distortions 
um, Harvard, not Harvard, but rather uh, MIT put out a very interesting paper about mesh distortions. And I'm not that great with mesh distortions, but they, they said something interesting that is angular distortions are very insignificant, but uh, isoparametric forces are very significant. So be in mind of that when you come across any kind of meshing distortion. And uh, as we mesh, um, there's, there's our ending mesh. And we do have a, what appears to be kind of a, a minor distortion, 0.9. So uh, we'll click OK. Again, you can remove elements and get better results without a distortion. I'm going to hide my geometry and just show my mesh. So I'm just looking at what I've meshed. Uh, from here, I'll double click on Calculix and uh, write an INP file. That's our analysis file. And then we can run our analysis after that. Uh, so while we wait for this thing to do its thing, I can maybe tell you a little bit about this mesh if you're not familiar. So we've uh, we've done a write on our calculus, and uh, we're doing some math here. So the idea behind this analysis is I've got a really complex geometry, and so basic analysis tools really aren't applicable over a complex geometry because it's too complicated to run basic equations. So what this analysis aims to do is it says, I can break up this complicated geometry into a bunch of little pieces, in this case, little triangles. And if I put a force on one end of a triangle, it's easy to calculate what the forces are on the other end of a triangle. And I can propagate those calculations all through the entire material. So I've taken a really complex geometry and by breaking it up into really small pieces that I can simply calculate, I can run thousands of simple calculations, which will give me an overall um, geometry or an overall calculation on on uh, what we're trying to to analyze so it's kind of a way of simplifying really complex geometry into basic pieces and that's the mesh's job and so when we uh, choose smaller sizes for our mesh we have more little triangles and that ultimately gives us a higher resolution on our analysis and that's where um, analyzing the most simple model comes into play. If I was very serious about this, I would remove some of these chamfers because they probably don't play a significant role. I'd remove the feet on the table, a few other things, and that allows for a more simple mesh, less calculation, but this is just a quick and dirty to show how FEM works. Uh, so let's see how much longer it looks like our calculus is done. We've done it in 94.7 seconds. So I'll close that for now. Again, we're just looking at our at our mesh here. So I've got this beautiful static results that have seemed to uh, show up. So if I double click on this Calculix results, um, I can see that my mesh turns green and I can visualize a few different elements of this FEM. The first thing is I can look at absolute displacement. Um, and so you can see our mesh changes color. Displacement is when something moves, right? I put a load on this face and it doesn't uniformly move, but the least supported places um, move the most. And so our red areas are where our frame isn't. The least supported places move. And I can even visualize how this displaces. And again, FreeCAD is absolutely brilliant um, for being this wonderful open source software. I can click on this show box. And as I drag this bar, it shows me how this table would displace. I can, I can visualize it. Although I'm not seeing much uh, displacement as I'm used to seeing. But yeah, you can see how this table deflects. Sometimes um, you see a lot more displacement than, than what we're seeing, and that's because it exaggerates the displacement so you can visualize it better. So if your table is drooping way down, that's pretty normal. Um, I'm going to actually make this a uh, factor of a thousand, so hopefully you'll be able to... Yeah, there's some more distortion, so you can visualize it a little bit easier. This is, of course, not true. Maybe I'll go 10,000. So you can see how this buckles in a very predictable way. 
the legs move because of this force on the side, and we have a higher distortion um, in the places that aren't supported. And, and so this table doesn't distort over places that are supported, as we would expect. Uh, so that's, that's truly brilliant. It's showing us um, exactly what we'd think of there. Let's go to von Mises stress. This is one of the uh, most important aspects of analysis because von Mises stress is so significant. We can see that we are the most stressed right down our frame lines. You can, uh, you can start to see that. And you can even um, see that the, the, the stress is because of the shear force that's acting between the top of the table and the frame, you get that shear force in that tabletop. Again, as we would expect, you also have some stress uh, down at the feet, but you can tell the colors are still very green. There's not much stress happening here. And then you can look at individual displacements, like what's the displacement only on my x-axis? What's the displacement only on my y or my z axes? So you have that, you have uh, principal stress, um, and shear, which of course we've seen. So there are some wonderful analysis tools. I hope this video was helpful in uh, getting you to start to analyze um, some things in FreeCAD. So again, uh, if this video was helpful, please subscribe and check out all visuals for you, and I'll see you in the next video.